Hello, guys, girls, other... Hey. All right, so something which I wanted to cover on this NetPower 16 is... Uh, well, most of the three series switches on Microtech are the same. So I wanted to show you guys a couple of really important things about your NetPower 16. Now, whether you're using this as a router on a stick com uh, configuration... Oh, my camera's askew. There we go. Whether you're using this thing in a router on a stick configuration, or whether you're actually using it as a uh, uh, standalone OSPF type device, um, you need to have the ability to layer two isolate. So let me show you this. So some of you guys might think, okay, I'm gonna add the bridge here, okay? I'm gonna add the bridge. All right, I'm just gonna throw a couple of ports in here, okay? We'll just go, all right, step two. <sighs> I'm allergic to life. Go away, Winter. We've had enough of you. You've been a wonderful winter this year. All right. So you see how there's an H there. Uh, now watch. We've got tool tips. So if I just hover over that and leave it, inactive hardware offload. That's what that means. All right. But watch what happens if I enabled Horizons. What a horizon is, is it allows you to create port isolation groups. So any of the groups that share the same horizon values cannot communicate with each other, right? This is not how you perform uh, layer two isolation on a micro tick. And with the modern micro ticks that uh, are leaning a little bit more on switch fabric for the uh, uh, hardware offloading, as you can see, it kills the hardware offloading, which means that you're gonna tank this thing because everything's gonna go through CPU. I'm just gonna undo those changes and see the H coming back. So how the hell do you, you know, isolate? Well, let me show you how to do that. So we're gonna go to a different spot. You see over here where it says switch? Okay, so we're gonna go to port isolation. Now remember, I'm gonna pretend, I'm just arbitrarily going to pretend, because uh, most of the time you're gonna use uh, your 10 gig ether, uh, er, interface for your um, uplink, right? Or trunk. So we're gonna call one trunk. So now if um, we assume that 6543 are all uh, access points and we don't want them to talk to each other, we want to do a forwarding override so that they can only talk to one port. So by doing this, you're seeing that this interface only has the ability to talk to ETH1 trunk, okay? So this isn't a router on a stick scenario or if you're just using, um, you know, if you've got a... Um, uh, switch hanging off of a switch or whatever, you know? If you've got all of your traffic funneling down to one interface, a trunk interface, this is how you would, in uh, blah, blah, blah. This is how you would ensure that none of these ports can talk laterally. They can't talk to each other because they're only allowed to forward to ETH1 trunk. So by doing this, under the switch section, port isolation, very much in your face there, um, you can now isolate those ports. They cannot talk to each other. All right. Now, let's say that you are doing a um, configuration where this is actually not um, uh, a router on a stick, but rather is a um, router mode um, three series or whatever series uh, microtech, just as long as it's not a one or two series. As long as it's a three plus series, it can do this, okay? So in that case here, uh, what you're going to choose is you're going to choose the CPU. So they are only allowed to talk to the CPU, which means that they can talk to the bridge, but they cannot talk to anything else. All right? So this allows them, sorry for the snotty snuffling and... Uh, it seems like as soon as I went to go to this video, my nose just started running. This is god-awful. All right, so assuming that this is going to be in a configuration where... Um, where'd it go? Assuming that this is going to be in a configuration where, um, you've got, uh, let's see here. There we go. Ta-da! All right. Uh, wow, that was a weird bug, by the way, if any of you guys caught that. Okay. So, if you're programming this thing up so that the bridge is just where all the customer traffic occurs and your management traffic might occur and whatnot, right? Then you would just 
you would force the ports to only be able to talk to the C uh, switch, which means in turn that they can only talk to the bridge, which is the parent interface, okay, if that makes sense to you. Um, otherwise, they cannot talk laterally. So th that's how you do port isolation, okay? So that's the first part of this little quick tutorial that I'm tossing together for you. I'm at five minutes, so that works out perfectly. Now, what about if you wanted to stop um, DHCP servers from back logging into this, right? Well, first of all, that alone is going to stop any rogue DHCP servers from like affecting uh, any other neighboring devices. So as long as you have your layer two isolation on this switch bridge and you've got client isolation on your uh, access points, then there's, it's not gonna, nobody's gonna be able to cross talk. But I still wanna show you something really interesting here. All right, so <clears throat> we've got a feature called DHCP snooping. Now it is very, very important that you configure this properly, okay? So if we enable DHCP snooping on this device, what that's going to do is it's not going to allow DHCP to enter this bridge on an untrusted port, okay? So if this bridge is the root bridge, then sure, DHCP snooping's fine because, you know, everything's coming back to here. The DHCP server is on this switch itself and it's activated on this bridge. But if you've got a trunk port like Ethernet 1 here, okay, then you need to make damn sure that you have it set as a trusted interface. <coughs> a trusted interface. If it's not set for trusted, then it won't even allow DHCP to come in on the trunk port. So any port that has trusted equals yes will allow, uh, or sorry, will be allowed to bring DHCP into this bridge, okay? So remember, if this switch is set up to be a standalone router with DHCP and OSPF or a DHCP and BGP, um, then yeah. Uh, you would typically just enable the port isolation. That's good enough, really. Um, <clears throat> and or you can do the DHCP snooping. If this is a router on a stick configuration, yeah, you're definitely going to want the layer 2 isolation, but that's definitely a scenario where you're going to want to make sure the DHCP snooping is enabled and make damn sure that your trunk port has or is trusted. The trusted is set here, okay? Now, I'm not going to go into any more configuration on this switch because I just did a video discussing the full configuration of this switch, okay? So that's it. <clears throat> and I'm sorry for my coughing and sniffling and tripping over my own bloody words tonight. It's just, um, yeah, I got, I got a cold. It's this false start spring has gotten into my skull and made me sick and... Yeah, I think there's also something in the air in here. I might have poisoned myself, but whatever. All right, so anyway, you guys enjoy and have a great night. And <coughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to get some more, you know, moonshine into me. Uh, ciao, buddies and girlies and horses and dogs and freaks that pretend that they're kitty cats. Bye. <laughs>